Uh, to get into to my takeaway, and I, I've hinted at this for a couple weeks, saying, you know what, just maybe one more loss, and I'll, I'll finally pull this one out. Kyle Shanahan might be the problem in San Francisco, and it is something I never thought I would say after uh, two years ago in their run to the Super Bowl and the NFC Championship. Since he took the reins in SF in 2017, he has a record of 32 and 40. If you take out that one season, the 13 and three, which is also his only season he's ever gone over 500 as a head coach in San Francisco, yep. 19 and 37, he has a 33% winning percentage. Similar coaches uh, who have winning percentages around that area, Adam Gase with the Jets had a 28% winning percentage, and, my, and Matt Patricia with the Lions had a 30% winning percentage. So it is not good company to be in. And of course, you can't just throw out one successful season, but Shrikar mentioned a tweet, and it was something I was going to say. I think it sums it up perfectly. Maybe we have to start looking at that season as the anomaly and not the norm. And I, because with past years, we had the injury year last year. This year, you know, people might put it on Jimmy G. The first year, you can put it on Jimmy G's injury. Maybe we start to realize that those years are really starting to outnumber the one year he went to the NFC Championship game. So maybe those years are are, are the norm in, instead of the anomaly, like we had kind of thought. But one other thing I want to talk about, because you can point out records all you want. Um, it's the doghouse. Like it, it this season, I feel like any time that you talk about the 49ers, you have to talk about the players that have just been thrown into the doghouse. And the way that Shanahan is just using his personnel, I absolutely hate it. I feel like he's a good coordinator. I feel like he, he draws up a pretty good offensive scheme. Uh, while in recent years, it has not lived up to its potential. And I feel like maybe he's not changing it as much as necessary. Like, other, other coaches do, specifically Sean McVay. <laughs> the personnel decisions make absolutely no sense. First of all, we know how dynamic of a talent Brandon Ayuk is. We saw what he did last year in his rookie season. And yet for the first eight weeks, especially the first like five, Kyle Shanahan just was refusing to use Brandon Ayuk, wouldn't say why, didn't put him out on the field, did not get him the football. And now, I mean, we've seen some flashes this year as well, if you look back to last week against Arizona. But for a team that couldn't win games, not using your better players. I, I just don't understand it. The way that he, that he's used the running back situation this year, it makes no sense to me either. Um, he's giving Elijah Mitchell all of the carries when they drafted and they traded up to draft Trey Sermon who was a much better in between the tackles runner. So it's, and for someone who has used a committee for almost his entire career as a coach, wouldn't it just make sense to use Trey Sermon up the middle uh, in between the tackles and use Elijah Mitchell for those outside zone runs. It just Kyle Shanahan. I'm starting to think he might not be a head coach. I'm starting to think he might be better off as a coordinator. He might be better off uh, just handling one side of the ball, the offense and not making personnel decisions because it, they've been bad. The 49ers have been very bad since coming off that, uh, that Super Bowl game. And I never thought I would say it just because we were all heralding Kyle Shanahan as maybe one of the top coaches in the league, one, maybe the best young coach in the league. I'm starting to move off that steadily every week that they, lose especially losing to the cardinals backups i'm really moving off that opinion of him and at some point i know he bought himself some time but you might have to think about firing him perfect explanation i think it was a great little spill um i mean forget the last few weeks i think i've been saying this since last year like for me the the super bowl even right niner fans would harp on me but i put more of the blame on kyle shanahan than jimmy g i think i've been a jimmy g supporter compared to you know out of us three i've I've always kind of defended him and I, I still am going to defend him. He's had some good moments this year. I know, I know there've been some bad throws and there, you know, we mentioned the chart, remember how he was at the bottom left and like, you know, best throws and stuff, but like Kyle Shanahan, look, here's the problem with the Niners. And I think this is why long-term, I don't think he's the answer. I think the Niners are still four, like they're fourth in their division in the, the stuff that matters the most, right? Quarterback. Right. And even, I mean, again, Carroll, right? Maybe Pete Carroll and, uh, you know, Coach Shanahan, kind of similar. But I think they're for, like their organization as a whole has been the fourth best in the last few years. I think, you know, the Cardinals, their general manager, I think it's Steve Kime. I believe that is his name. I think so. Um, he's been terrific. I like kudos to him. Again, Kingsbury has uh, one of my takeaways this year was I thought or sorry, this week was that he should be the coach of the year favorite. So, you know, he's been tremendous. Carol, right with Russell Wilson, I think that tandem itself, we've seen success from them. And obviously McVay, who hasn't had a losing season, right? Forget that. He's had a winning season every every year of his career. He has been, I 
again, I think I, if I were starting a team, he would probably be in, you know, my three coaches that I would start a team with right now. Like he is just terrific. So I think that's my main thing with the Niners. I think they're just fourth. They're lagging behind long-term, which is crazy because the Rams don't even have draft picks. Um, but yeah, like well, I the think Niners how, don't either. I mean, think about it. Yeah. The Niners yeah, and, banked and they moved up for Lance and they traded away everything. And I was they don't not have a fan picks. of the move. I mean, like all these Niner fans were getting so excited and you got to think about it, right? If trade doesn't win you a Super Bowl, right? Because you were you're at the time you were two years removed from one of the best seasons the Niners have had in a very long time, right? I mean, like this guy has to like this this franchise is still pretty historic and it's got five rings to him, and they've got pretty high expectations up here in the Bay. I mean, if he can't, you know, win a Super Bowl or even become a franchise quarterback, I mean, that is a terrible, terrible trade because you gave away two years of your future, two years of picks that would just that are right now looking pretty good right now. I think the Niners are on pace to get a top 10 pick. So, you know. It, well, I think technically they're on pace to get someone else a top 10 pick. Yeah. Someone else a top it, which I believe is Miami. Um, yep. So again, just not a favorable look for SF long-term. I think there's, there's gotta be some questions, which is sad for a historically great franchise that has always had some good years in every decade, 2000s, not as much, but you know uh, it sucks to see. And I think for Kyle Shanahan, you know, we got to start questioning it because, you know, I, I, and I also am not a big fan of the way he's kind of addressed the media recently, just again, a little shallow, a little bit of this passive aggressive type of mindset, you know, be a head coach, own up to it. Or, you know, and I, he has a couple of times, but especially with the whole quarterback situation too, I think we were left in the dark a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that's my thoughts on Kyle Shane. I think we, I've also been pretty expressive about it. Not the biggest fan. Uh, I've always said that he's a bit overrated and I've, I've received a lot of backlash for that. Um, but I think it's time to really think about it. Even B- Trigar, I obviously is not here. He did mention that he would give till mid 2022. I would think about maybe in the off season thinking about it. I think you, I, I think they have to wait to see what Trey Lance does yeah. uh, because that could he save did him. buy him some time with that. But. Like, I don't want to say it's an ego issue because obviously we don't, we can't see inside the mind of Kyle Shanahan, but there have been a lot of things that have kind of stirred up that possible idea he's just kind of had a ref- ever since the Super Bowl and ever since uh, things started to go awry in San Francisco, just a refusal to change the scheme, yeah, um, really. a refusal to kind of own up to some mistakes he's made both personnel wise, both to the media. It's, I don't know. It, it, it's just really weird. Um, it, it, he's very different than a lot of NFL coaches. I feel like he's kind of in his own mold and when it's, when things are going good, that's okay. And, and it, and it, makes sense you can you can be a little bit uh you know standoffish with the media you can hold back some information when you're winning football games but when you're not the light is the spotlight's really on you and it starts to look bad and i know he had that great 13 and 3 season but good coaches win more than 33 percent of their games no matter the circumstances i mean if you gave bill belichick this roster and and we haven't even talked about the roster and how many talented players that he has access to using it is a top would you say a top half roster in the NFL? Yeah. I would that. And, and I mean, he's they've turning got a that lot of into... players that are just, you know, they've got huge upside, right? I mean, like Nick yeah. Bosa, right? Eric Armstead, Fred Warner. Fred Warner. Yeah. I mean, those look terrible. I mean, well, that's also, I think, the loss of Salah. I think that's just a compounding effect. But it is. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. But just with the roster, it, no matter the circumstances, you have to be able to win more than 30 ish percent of your games to be able to be a head coach or to be considered even a good head coach. I said a couple of weeks ago, I think now he's in that bottom half. He's just slowly dropping more and more. He lost to Colt McCoy uh, to a team that didn't have J.J. Watt, DeAndre Hopkins, or I believe Chandler Jones either. It's it's looking bad in San Francisco. And, and we talked with Ricard about it, and he literally said <laughs> Kyle Shanahan is a bad coach. And so if coming straight from the mouth of a Niners fan, I think that tells you all you need to know. Obviously, it sucks. We I'm not a Niners fan, but Ricard is, and I don't know that we all <laughs> live in the Bay. It's, it's better around here when the Niners are doing well. People are happier. And a couple of years ago, we got that big glimmer of hope. And I just feel like after what we've seen right now, the glimmer of hope is, like I mentioned earlier, it's the anomaly. It's not the norm. Agreed. Yeah. I think 